I'm Marcus, and I run a company called In a Spasm of Creativity, the Marcus Bucking Company, and we design strengths-based training solutions for companies around the world. Strengths, everybody has strengths. When you study great managers, you realize that what great managers do differently from most other managers is they realize that a person will grow the most and develop the most and perform better in the areas where they have some natural strength. Of course, everyone's got weaknesses too, and you need to mitigate those, and you need to improve those, but the great insight, I think, that, that managers have, that many of us forget, is that your greatest areas of opportunity for growth lie in your strengths, not your weaknesses. You need to deal with weaknesses so they don't get in the way, but we shouldn't call them areas of opportunity, or areas for development, because they're the areas of least opportunity for development. We should call them what they are. We should call them what great managers call them, which is weaknesses, things that weaken us. And they are not places where we're going to grow and develop, they're places that are going to hurt us and so we need to deal with them. You focus on strengths because that's where you're going to grow and develop and create the most resilient, most collaborative in life and in work. Well, obviously the, to help you discover your strengths, there are a number of different assessments that you could take. I'm partial to one that I helped develop called Strength Finder, but there are others like Myers-Briggs, like 16PF, like DISC. There's some very good tests out there. Uh, I think though in the end where I'm moving more to is the idea that a strength is an activity that makes you feel strong. A strength isn't what you're good at. A weakness isn't what you're bad at. There are plenty of things that you're very good at that you hate and that if you ever had to do them again, it would be a day too soon. So the definition of a strength is what you're good at is simply confusing strength with, with, with job performance. And if, if strength is job performance, then you probably aren't the best judge of your strength. But, but strength isn't just job performance, because as I said, you perform well in some areas that really drain the living daylights out of you. A strength is an activity that makes you feel strong. Well, if that's the best definition of a strength, then the person who's best qualified to identify your strengths is you. So what we need to do as managers, as, and as training professionals, HR professionals, we've got to help employees understand, A, that your strengths are activities that invigorate you, and B, that you are the person who can best identify them, and C, the answers to what are my strengths lie in the raw material of a regular week of your life, if you just know how to look. We've got to teach our employees how to identify their strengths from just a regular week of their life. So that when we sit down for performance reviews or performance appraisals, it isn't the employee sitting there with a blank sheet of paper, or, or blank sheet of paper going, develop me. It's the employee coming in with a really rich understanding of which activities invigorate the living daylights out of me and which activities drain me. How can I leverage more of these, contribute more of these, learn skills and experiences that sharpen and refine these, and how can I manage around these so that I don't get in the way? That's something that we can teach every employee to do. We don't and we should, so that it becomes then a creative conversation between the manager and the employee on how to get the best out of the employee, as opposed to what it is now, which is where the manager develops the employee.